My name is Clay Clark, and I'm the CEO of Thrive15.com. I'm also the father of five kids, and I'm a, sort of a big deal in Delaware. But today, I am joined with Clifton Talbert, one of America's most successful people. This guy has literally gone from the cotton field where he was born in Glen Allen, Mississippi, to the top of the boardroom where he actually owns his own bank. And today, he's going to be teaching us a little bit about his story. We all have a story, but he's going to be teaching about his story, a story that was actually made into a movie called Once Upon a Time When We Were Colored. And I'm telling you, when you watch today's episode, it can change your life because we all have a story. We all have a history, but we have to break that cycle of poverty and move into prosperity if that's where we're at. Or maybe you grew up middle class and you just want to do something awesome. Or maybe you're already doing something awesome, but you wanted to do something even more awesome. But today's episode can absolutely bless you. He's gonna teach you specifically principles you can apply in your own life to go from where you are to where you want to be. Remember at Thrive15.com, we all believe that knowledge without application is absolutely meaningless. So as you're watching today's episode, I challenge you, go ahead, take the time to ask yourself, what do you need to do to uniquely apply these principles within your own life and business? Because if not, today's episode may just be more meaningless than those old Borders gift cards I still have. All right, today we are joined with a best-selling and Pulitzer Prize-nominated author, a man who's had his life made into a movie, uh, a man who helped start a bank, uh, a man who helped launch the Stairmaster, and my good friend Clifton Talbert. Thank you for being here, sir. Thanks, Clay. It's a pleasure. Hey, I really do appreciate it. And today we're going to talk a little bit about failures. We're going to talk about really overcoming adversity. Um, everybody, if you're watching right now uh, and you're a human, we've all had adversity. I know right now I'm dealing with uh, uh, my, my dad having cancer. Um, it doesn't feel good. Um, I know that we, my son was born blind. Uh, I know that everybody watching this has had some kind of personal tragedy or financial tragedy, but yet we have to press on. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to ask you some, some questions, and, and uh, uh, we'll see what we can, we can learn from your, your experience. So I guess question number one here is, what have been some of your failures? You know, when I, when I think about that, and, and you are right, uh, we, we don't live in this world without failures. But the failures are not necessarily the worst thing that can happen to us because it helps to shape us for the future. Uh, the, and I won't necessarily call it a failure, but I, I can call this maybe the greatest tragedy in my life that could have easily set me back for the rest of my life was the death of my daughter. Uh, I almost gave up. Um, I didn't have a reason to live. Uh, Annie was the light of our lives. And when Annie died, uh, I somehow felt that I had died with her. How old was she? She was seven she... years old. Seven. Um, but at the same time, as time moved along, my wife and my son and myself, the three of us be began to gel in such a way. And it's as if that challenge gelled us. In, in, in such a way that we became this invincible unit of three, de de determined that we would make Annie's life worth remembering. Was just, because I, I feel like, um, and I don't know the whole story, that's why I'm asking, mm -hmm. but did, um, was she sick? That's the, that's the difficult part. Annie was born with sickle cell anemia, uh, but she had never been sick a day in her life. Uh, she got sick. Uh, one day, and 21 days later, she was dead. And so you're dealing with the death of your daughter, and I can't imagine that, you know, uh, other than, um, I know my son couldn't see, I felt helpless, and it was a, it was a tough uh, time. What did you feel like doing? Do you feel like crawling into a hole, and then what did you do? I mean, what did you feel like doing, and then what did you do? Well... Several things to answer that, because let's back a little bit okay. before I married, before Annie. Uh, one of the great challenges that I faced was leaving the Mississippi Delta, and I thought St. Louis would be the answer. 
And, and I realized that I didn't have all the qualifications that were needed. And, and so I have my high school diploma. I graduated number one in my class. Boom. And, and I'm just so excited to be in this great city. And I can't get a job. I can't get a job for a number of reasons. Uh, and, and I'm trying everything that I can. But there is one job that I do not want. This one job I've said I would never do. I would never wash dishes for anybody. Because that to me was a throwback to the world I had left. Okay. But I had to do it. I had to break down and do this job that I didn't want to do because I was committed to taking care of myself. Okay. I was committed to helping my family. So I had to do that job. But the job, that job became the cotton fields again. Mm. And I realized I'm in, this, I'm in the pots and pan room in St. Louis washing dishes. My physical body is there, but my mindset is not there. If my mindset had been there, I guarantee you, I wouldn't be sitting here with you today. And I wanna give just a little bit of context for people that maybe don't know. You grew up in the completely segregated uh, time in American history where uh, African Americans and uh, Caucasian Americans do not. There was no social interaction for the most part. It was almost nil. Okay. And, and so that, you know, that becomes a construct for defining what I want and, and what I thought would happen. And, 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 and to make this closure with, with yeah. Annie, uh, and, and when Annie passed away, and, and I had to draw from some strength, had I not been able to survive Mississippi, had I not been able to survive not being able to get a job, every survival, you build up something inside of you that prepares you for something bigger that you may have to deal with. So that's why I'm saying I, I don't rule the day that challenges come, but what I try to do is figure out how to get beyond that because that success movement will be an asset at some point. And I think it was an asset around our lives because I had learned over the years not to cave in.